comes with a, a standard EQ1 mount and okay it's a budget scope so it, it's not the, it's not the sturdiest mount in the world but yeah it, it keeps the cost down and providing it's not too wind, windy outside it, it does the job to get you started you, you'll, you'll notice there's a, a couple of counterweights down here and my advice when you're setting up for the first time to avoid any disasters put that on before you put the OTA or the optical tube assembly on because if you do it the other way around and everything's not tightened up it may drop down and you're going to end up with a big dint in, in, the, in the tube <clears throat> and uh, also when you're putting the you're setting this up uh, before you put the um, the scope on make sure you have it so the connector here for the slow motion control is on the bottom and that makes it much easier uh, for when it comes to using it and regards moving the telescope around very very easy you can either use the slow motion controls or move it around manually very very easily very easy to set up and when you do set it up that is pointing north and try to get it nice and flat so this telescope it's it's what is known as a catadioptric newtonian reflector but a lot of other people um, on the forums and etc call it the bird jones design but i like to say the word catadioptric newtonian reflector because that's a longer word and, and it makes me sound like I, I know what I'm talking about. So this one, so what is a catadioptric Newtonian? Well basically, uh, well a catadioptric is a telescope with both a mirror and a lens. The 130 version of this has a mirror down here and, and the eyepiece but there's no other lens. This version inside the focuser is a little corrector lens which acts the same as a as a two times Barlow lens and so that then makes this from a 500 millimeter focal length into a 1000 so that's only like 500 millimeter half a meter focal length but that doubles it so in effect you've already got a Barlow lens built into the telescope making it a, a, a um, f uh, 8.77 instead of a, a 4.3 or thereabouts which has its advantages and disadvantages advantage is that you have more magnification for from a compact scope and also you'll find you can get prime focus photography with a, a DSLR camera on but I, I did notice uh, with this telescope the, the focuser you know it, it's a it's a budget telescope so if you put a DSLR on there the focus may slowly creep down so be sure you have the focuser level rather than up and down um, you know to prevent the um, the camera moving um, disadvantage I, I guess uh, you have more optics for the light to go through to get from here to the eyepiece so you are going to lose a little bit of light some contrast and it's going to make a, a slower telescope but you know it, it depends which is more important to you that higher magnification or the brighter view you get a standard red dot finder here which um, gets mi mixed responses from people that have talked about it on my I, my channel um, it would I would prefer it myself if there was a hot shoe connection uh, so you could um, fit a, a larger range of uh, finder scopes on and it comes this is a Newtonian telescope so it should have in theory an upside down image but it comes with a 10 millimeter eyepiece which is a standard modified achromatic budget one but also a 20 millimeter um, erect image eyepiece the erect image eyepiece gives 50 magnification and the 10 millimeter gives 100 magnification the erect image eyepiece, I'm personally not a fan of them myself on an astronomical telescope because there's a prism inside the eyepiece, similar to binoculars, so it flips the image around and so you can see the image right way up with the correct left-right orientation. A disadvantage of that is that you are going to get a little bit more, in theory, chromatic aberration or false colour 
and uh, some more light loss because the, the light is traveling through a prism um, you know to, to help you know, reduce the uh, the light that reaches the eyepiece you may look through that eyepiece you know you bought this telescope for the first time you may look through the eyepiece at um, maybe a star cluster or something and you'll think wow this is incredible all those stars I can see and and you look at the moon and again you'll think what a fantastic eyepiece I can see all the craters and it's the same with a, a lot of eyepieces you look through them budget eyepieces for the first time and you think they're really good because you've not looked through a better eyepiece and um, what I have here uh, is I've reviewed it before I, I really like this eyepiece um, you know, for a budget eyepiece, it's the Kepler Optic 25mm long eye relief eyepiece. And I put this 20mm on and uh, I got some very nice views of some um, long distance uh, uh, daytime targets and a very nice image. I put the 25mm on and the difference was like night and day. It was a much brighter view, longer eye relief wider, crisper in every single way. So if you were to look at a star cluster with a 20mm eyepiece and then you change the 25mm plus all, it will give an upside down image but the the difference in quality is stunning. You, you, you won't go back to the erect image eyepiece believe me after using a plus all. And so what I will do with my uh, listing on my website uh, while stocks last I will give the option to add the 25 millimeter eyepiece um, as as part, you know, of a, an option there. And so with with this telescope, it, you'll see down to about the 12th magnitude. Um, you, you're going to see a wealth of mountain ranges and um, craters, etc., valley valleys on the moon, and you should be able to get some half decent photographs. And when you do take photographs with a DSLR, be sure to use magnified live view. That gives you much more accurate focus. Uh, use raw file if you can, and there are plenty of um, there's plenty of software out there, image stacking such as Registax and Photoshop, where you should be able to improve your images even greater. Looking at Jupiter, yes, you will see easily the four moons, the cloud belts, um, as well. Saturn, yes, you will see the rings around Saturn and a, a number of its moons, and Venus and Mercury will show its phases. From a dark sky area, you will see many, uh, in particular when you use this 20, the 25mm uh, alternative eyepiece, you know, a number of um, faint galaxies, nebula and star clusters, you know, a nebula such as the Orion Nebula, and star clusters such as the Pleiades or Seven Sisters and the Beehive Cluster. So it is a very good starter scope. Um, uh, a sensible price point will be below £200. Everything you need in the box uh, is included, although I would advan um, advise getting the additional 25mm eyepiece. So I hope that helps. That's a quick look at the Celestron Astromaster 114 Catadioptric Newtonian Reflector. Thank you very much for watching, as always, and please check out the link in the description below.